Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining for a very special live event celebrating Hallmark Channel's The Way Home. We have some amazing guests today. I'm Brienne Heldman. I am the senior TV editor at People, and I'm welcoming Sadie LaFlemme Snow, who plays Alice. We have Alex Hook, who plays Young Cat. And we have David Webster, who plays Young Elliot. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, this is Thank so you. fun. Congratulations on the first episode already airing. Thank you. Now, Sadie, we talked last week before the premiere, and you were so excited about seeing this thing finally air. What was that like? How does it feel now that it's out there in the universe? I mean, it feels it feels good. It's kind of funny being in Canada because the Canadian premiere is a week late. So no one that I'm around or that I see in my everyday life has seen it yet. But, you know, it's out in the world and we can finally talk about it and we, we got to celebrate it. And um, so it, it feels really exciting. I, I love hearing that people are are kind of in the mood to binge it after they've seen the first episode because that's kind of what we want. We want people to like be just like dying to come back for more. So the, the response has been just amazing so far. Awesome. And Alex and David, what was it like for you guys watching this thing finally come out? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> it was it was incredible. Um, I was I was so happy with it because you know you see everything on set as it's being filmed and it's uh, you know, you, you never entirely get a sense of what it's going to look like in the end. So seeing that it all came together just as we had hoped it would, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I remember just kind of watching the first few minutes and it took me a while to realize that I had a, a dead smile on my face the entire time. <laughs> so it's, you kind of have to bring yourself back to reality a few times throughout. Um, but exactly as David said, you never really know what the outcome is going to look like. And then when you finally see everyone's talents really shining through in their characters it's just it's such a a nice i guess relief and like a warm um a little pat on the back i guess that's cool so what was one of the, some of the best reactions you either saw online or anyone said to you or even what your parents said once they saw it I have a pretty good one, actually. Okay, go. <laughs> let's hear it. Come on, let's hear the stories. <laughs> one of my friends watched it, and they came up to me completely serious and said, you know what, Alex? The show was great, and I loved every minute of it. Um, but when there was an inside man, and they're talking about the fact that Elliot knows about the, the time travel back and forth, he said, the inside man made it excellent <laughs> and i i thought that was a, a great sign at the very kind of last second the fact that we know that elliot's involved and and my friend just seemed to have eaten that part up <laughs> that's fun how does that make you feel david i mean it's incredible writing it really <laughs> is um it, it, it's the hinge of the entire 99 2023 uh relationship really is the fact that there's there's people who know there's one person who knows on either side of that that time then um but it's great i'm so glad that people are liking it as much as i did sadie what did your parents say when they watched it well my parents were at the premiere in new york last week and that was so much fun they're so excited because they were already pretty like jealous that it was going to come out in the states and that they had to wait and so when they got invited to come see they were thrilled and i think I think they were surprised how much they were swept away in the story, even though they have such a personal connection to the show. They, we watched one and two back to back and, and they were like, I need more, more. Who, who has the link to the next episodes? Um, so it was, it was like, you know, just really, it, it's a story about family and then to have your family there. And, and I'm sure like you guys are all going through this with your own family members and people who are close to you. Like, there's something really vulnerable about sharing a story like this, but also really meaningful because everything you you know about family is is, is in the show. So. Cool. So in the next episode, we're going to spend a bit more time in the 90s. We're going to spend a bit more time with Alex and David. We haven't had that much time with them just yet. So David, tell me a little bit about young Elliot. What do we need to know about him? 
Well, Elliot loves science, as uh, is obvious by his future career choice. Um, he loves the Landry family. They've done a lot for him. Uh, he lives in their barn for a good portion of, uh, of his time in that loft up there. And um, especially Kat, she's a really good friend to him and is very, very important to him. And uh, he basically wants to try to help Alice as much as he can. And he finds the time travel very, very interesting. Very interesting, figuring out the mechanics of the pawn. Um, but at the core, he's a really soft-hearted uh, and caring fellow. Aw. Yeah. And, and Alex, what do we need to know about young Cat? I typically like to describe her as just very um, full of life. I'd say she's extremely energetic, joyful, um, almost untouched at that age, especially in the 90s, meaning that she hasn't really experienced many of the the hardships that are soon to come. Um, so she's just a very take it as it goes, present person, values her family, her friends, um, quality time spent just doing what she loves around the people she loves. And then I think it's, it's important that you begin seeing that shift, I guess, as the, the show goes on, um, just as she's, she begins to be more exposed to some of the, the unfortunate sides of, of her so happy life, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Sadie and Alex, you guys are now going to have these scenes together where obviously Sadie, you know, Alice knows that Kat is her mom. And mm -hmm. um, what is that like on your end? And then I wanna hear from Alex what it's like knowing but having to act like you have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I feel like um, for, for Alice, she's really struggling in the present day with her family dynamics and also with being a new kid. She doesn't really have any friends. She doesn't really have any peers. And so the transformation that you see in, in Alice going back to the past is like you see this girl that her parents haven't seen in years that her family doesn't even really know anymore because she meets people who are just like excited that she's there and they don't have any like preconceived ideas about her. And so she's kind of the best version of herself around um, Teen Cat, but then you go back into the present and you see that she's the worst version of herself around her mom. So it just goes to show, um, you know, how much their family has gone through and how how hard that's been on their relationships. Um, but it really it really made my experience filming those scenes so fun because I actually got to like I'm always enjoying the scene, but I got to enjoy the scene in the scene, which was refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex had to pretend that the scene in the scene didn't exist. How was that? How hard was that? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't find it that difficult. Um, only because I part of me thinks that my end i don't know sadie correct me if i'm wrong but my end was almost easier to just be friends with this girl and because i technically i guess don't know that she's my daughter um how would i but the fact that we i mean sadie and i just had the chemistry of like two girls who like each other and just enjoy spending time with each other and having fun and talking about boys and drama and and life um, so it, the scenes themselves just felt very real, and it was it was pretty easy to to act like friends. Um, so I I didn't find it too difficult to sort of forget that you know there was a lot more multi dimensional complexity involved here. You know, it's just two girls having a good time. Something I think that is really fun about about young cat uh that i really admire and i i have to be honest that it's a part of the show that's actually really stayed with me is just how wide open cat is when she meets mm. alice i mean it's an instant friendship and yes there's chemistry there but she is unquestioning and welcomes her so open-heartedly and it was it's one of those things that i think about when we meet people we almost never approach them that way so I love that about the show. I love that about the way that you played that character and played those scenes. So congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really, really cool. Yes. Um, so Alex and David, tell me a little bit about how much time you guys spent 
with with the, your adult counterparts to did you have to pick up any mannerisms or anything like that? I mean, what kind of conversations were did you have with them? Go for it, David. <laughs> um, Evan and I, we uh, we sat down on a Zoom meeting one day and uh, basically we just hashed out every little tick that he might have, what physical mannerisms he's having in response to certain situations, whether it be stress or whether he'd be excited or he'd be thinking about something. And we really, we ground over those things. And I thought when I saw him, wow, Cass, can, can we acknowledge for a second what a great job casting did with, yeah. with Alex and I? <laughs> yes, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, <laughs> incredible, incredible. Um, and so, yeah, we just worked through mannerisms and um, it wasn't incredibly difficult because we kind of naturally had like a flow between us, which worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, although it, I didn't get to see him a ton on set because of the time difference, obviously, you can't have adult Elliot and teen Elliot in the same scene. Um, I but mean, one... is that a rule? Like, is that a spoiler? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there, but there, there, there were times that I did see him. There were times that I did see him. And when I did, he's a great guy. He's a great, great guy. Um, and uh, I got to see a little bit of footage of him doing his performances, and I tweaked mine a little bit accordingly. And uh, so, yeah, we, we just worked and played off each other like that. And how about you, Alex? How much time did you spend with Kyler? Because I like I do think you are the spitting image of her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gotten that quite a bit, actually. <laughs> um, just even some of my friends and family watching and staring at her and thinking, wow, so that's what you're going to look like in a few years. <laughs> Good to know. Um, Kyler and I, at, in the very early stages, I actually, I reached out similar to David and just said, hey, do you want to talk about how we might see this role kind of playing out? Um, and we pretty much agreed through conversation that, yes, it's important to kind of show those similarities, but we thought that in the writing and also also just the way we look, um, that in itself did a lot to kind of emphasize those similarities, but it was more important to almost illustrate the contrast between us, especially mm -hmm. because, I mean, a, a lot changes in a person in two decades, let alone Kat specifically with everything that she had to go through and experience. So it was more important to us that we were able to have that kind of gap between the two personalities, despite them being the same person. Um, but then beyond that, even there was, I guess, one time where Kyler and I closely collaborated and I, I won't dive into what that was or when that was, but dive in, but I'm oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, but it, it was an important conversation to have. And I remember sitting down for about 30 minutes and just kind of hashing out how I was going to portray this certain scene um, and she gave me a lot of advice and a lot of little nuanced kind of secrets and tips and tricks and tidbits here and there. And, and I think that'll hopefully show when the actual scene airs, but it was definitely helpful having some of her input there. Cool. So Sadie, how did they do? Were there any moments when you were with Alex and David where like you got chills and you were like, oh my God, that's exactly how Kyler or Evan would have said that? Well, like all the time, all the time, <laughs> because I'm going back and forth so much. Um, and they're my two closest people in the present day and in the past. And so I didn't really realize, like, I didn't know that you guys had sat down on the Zoom and kind of collaborated on certain mannerisms and stuff. So not only was I seeing it every day how similar they were and they were completely fooling me. I was like, wow, the casting, like they, 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 they act like this all the time. They act the same all the time. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but then when, when I actually saw the episode where they're revealed as the younger versions, like that gave me chills seeing, because I know them as people outside of their characters. So I think I get used to it. So seeing it on screen, like, I just like I started crying when like when David pops his head out of the window and he's like cat I was like ah oh my god it's working <laughs> it's working um it's so exciting so I don't know I think you guys both did an amazing job and and that was a huge thing that we were hearing from people too as the um the episode was airing was that like wow like 
the matches for people are amazing and, and that keeps going on throughout the whole season. So if it's something that people are enjoying it, I'm sure they'll, they'll enjoy it all the way through. Awesome. So I want to leave the show for a second and do a little bit of origin story for the three of you and your acting careers. So we'll start with you, Sadie. Was there a moment or an experience where you realized you wanted to be an actor? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've i always been into like singing and dance and stuff like that since I was really little. And then my mom and my grandmother, actually maybe my whole family went to see Billy Elliot, like the touring cast. Mm -hmm. And I left the show and I was like really serious. And my mom was like, what? You're like, that was fun. Like, <laughs> smile on your face. What's your problem? And I was like, I just, I just think I, I could do that. And I think I, I could, I need to do it. And she was like, okay, well then we'll make it happen. Anyway, so it wasn't, it wasn't really an immediate like, oh, and then the next day I started. <laughs> but I remember that as like a moment in time where I was like, I want to do this and I want to do it for the rest of my life. And so you know, time passed, whatever, went to high school, I went to theater school and that um, film and TV is a new love of mine. Um, but I think I found a really nice home here. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Alex, what about you? Was there a moment or an experience where it just clicked? I think it wasn't as much a moment. Um, I mean, I'm... I'm sure if anything, it was probably a compilation of a hundred moments, right. but um, I definitely discovered it to be a passion at a really young age. So my mom went to school actually for film um, and she kind of just put me in everything when I was young. So I did like sports and horseback riding and acting and, and everything under the sun. And then when I got to an age where I had to start picking and choosing, um, I was in theater so originally started on stage and I really, really liked the idea of pretending to be someone else. I thought that was the most fascinating, interesting thing that someone could have the, the, the chance to do. Um, so on stage, I'm, you know, I'm this person and then I leave and I get to be Alex again. And, and that's just like, I, I leave an entirely different person. Um, but I, I didn't love the whole exaggerated, I guess, aspect of acting on stage and in theater. So that's when I sort of made the transition and, and my mom said, okay, well, if you don't like it, let's try TV and film. Um, so I, I made the transition then, but I guess I, my roots were, were in theater. <laughs> Very cool. Do you do impressions? I, I don't think so. I, <laughs> it's only a road I've ever tried to go down. <laughs> maybe maybe like if I do study. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, I can do an, an older cat. Yeah, you can do a Tyler Lee impression. Yeah. yeah when she was younger in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and how about you, David? When was the I want to be an actor moment? Well, growing up, I always loved films. Um, I would try to recreate my favorite films by building sets out of cardboard and acting and filming them myself. Um, I used to uh, I used to think about how I would make movies and make my own setups and whatnot. And then my mom put me into theater at one point and I did a local production of uh, Les Miserables and played Gavroche, which was uh, awesome because when you're, when you're seven or eight years old and you get to die on camera, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, or, or on stage, that's very exciting. So um, that's, that's when I knew that I fell in love. And then I, uh, I, there was a local thing because I grew up in Northern Ontario, so there wasn't much of an industry at the, at the time. Um, but there was a local sort of talent scouting thing and I was picked up. That's basically been at it ever since. Very cool. So are there direct, do you want to direct one day? Cause I mean, you know, if you're doing your own little productions as a kid, it seems. I, I would love to write and direct one day when I was basically all of my time through high school, I spent writing uh, a television series. So huge, huge, on, huge on, on behind the camera work. Have you shown that to anyone? Um, a little you're bit. like, Annie McDowell, let me just slide you this script. <laughs> Maybe. It, it needs a little bit of work. I did write it when I was 15, but I think, I, think there's, I think there's a solid idea there. I haven't given up on it. Absolutely not. 
<laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. So last week we got Sadie's audition story, but I want to hear about yours, Alex. What was that process like? The audition was very, very fun. Um, I got to play actually the specific scene that I auditioned with. I, I did three, but the most young cat one was where she's pulling her out of the water the very first time you meet her. And she's kind of this blabbermouth, can't stop talking. Like, what were you doing in there? How dare you do that? There's leeches, it's disgusting, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I remember just talking a, a mile a minute in my audition and then stopping and thinking, was that good? <laughs> do I do it again? And I'm like out of breath. Um, so it was a very fun, engaging audition. Um, and I fell in love with the storyline almost immediately when I got the breakdown. Um, so I, I kind of knew that it was a character that I could really bring to life. And I not only could I, but I, I really wanted to. And I felt almost part of me um, was connected to her. So it is cliche as it sounds, but I definitely have little pieces of young cat in me that I was able to, to leverage. Um, so it, it definitely didn't come from anywhere. And, and that's kind of why I, I love the character so quickly. Very cool. David, what was it like for you? Well, I actually auditioned for a different character first um, at some point in the summer. And when I read the script then, I thought, wow, this is awesome. This is incredible. And time went on. And then I got uh, the audition for Teen Elliot. I thought, wow, this is, this is, I, I love this even more. So I did um, my audition for that. I really loved it. Try to bring what I could into uh, the depth of, of the time travel nature to the story. Um, and uh, when I eventually found out I got it, I was stoked because working on things that you genuinely like the, the source material for is incredible. It's incredible. What did I? What did either of you do when you found out that you were going to get to be working with Andy McDowell? Uh, well, I was very excited. I wrote all of my uh, my my buddies who love films and <laughs> told them all because, of course. You know they're they're big fans of Groundhog Day and 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 the works, um, so that was the first thing I did. I had to tell, I had to tell all of my close <laughs> my close film friends. Did you tell them more about Andy or about the actual show itself? I probably told them more about the show, <laughs> <laughs> but like it, you know, within within reason. Don't want to spoil it for them. Yeah, fair, fair. How about you, Alex? I was really excited to, to kind of work with both of them. Um, I. Honestly, in my generation, not to age anyone, no. <laughs> um, Ky Kyler was more closely known as a name. So through like her work with Grey's Anatomy and Supergirl, that's kind of what I knew more of when I discovered that, you know, who's going to be a part of the show. I knew a lot more of her work. Um, but then, of course, once I did the digging into Andy and like I always knew the names. Right. But right. You, you like to do your research and kind of see where these people come from and their roots and what they've done in the past. And and then I quickly realized that this is this is going to be a, a very big, <laughs> big cast with lots of experience, lots of wisdom. Um, so it was definitely intimidating, but very exciting. Awesome. Now, Sadie, I didn't ask you this last time. What did you do to celebrate when you booked it? Or what was the call like? Um, I love this story because I was I was in Spain and I was in Ibiza for 24 hours. And I was like obsessively checking my phone and I was like, okay, you need to stop. Like you're you're literally you're in the most beautiful place on the planet. You have to stop checking your phone. Like no one's gonna call you. They haven't called you for three weeks. Just let it go. But I just kind of like had a feeling. And then I got a text being like, hey, give me a call like from my team. And then um, when I called them and they told me like I was driving down this like really, really scary highway like in and I, I didn't have service. I was using like data to like WhatsApp call. And so it was like, got the show. It was like really, really stupid. And then I and then I got on a ferry for six hours and didn't have service on the ferry either. So I, um, it was like really chaotic and I also knew I was starting in like four days. So it was, uh, it was really exciting. Like, but I couldn't tell anyone because I just, I had no service and I was just <laughs> to, like, sit with the excitement and the, my friend who I was with is like 
a huge fan of Kyler and her mom is a huge fan of Andy. And then I got to the airport and there was a big L'Oreal sign with Andy's face on it. So I took a picture of myself with this. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so um, that's, that's what I did. <laughs> that's fantastic. David, what did you do when you booked it? Um, well, I let everyone know, let my parents know, and uh, basically decided to uh, have a have a long have a long talk about. Okay, so be in Southern Ontario for a while. Gonna <laughs> gonna be working on this, and just just had a moment with the the close people in my life. That's yeah. nice, Alex. What'd you do to celebrate? Um, I. I didn't do much to celebrate. I, I definitely kind of similar to Sadie, but definitely not to the same extent. I got the call while I was at the gym. And I think my, my heart always weirdly sinks when I see a phone call from my agent. Typically, it's like an email or a text or something. Mm. And when I see a missed call, it's, she never usually calls me. <laughs> so I, I immediately called her back and, and I said, hi, hi, how's it going? I'm so sorry I was at the gym. And then she told me that I booked it. And, and it was kind of just this, I was alone on the streets of Toronto and just this moment of, oh my gosh, like, who do I tell? I wanted to like stop a stranger on the street and say, like, I just booked a show. Um, so it's, it's always, you never know how to react in those moments, but I was kind of overjoyed, I would say. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Did you go out for dinner? What'd you do to celebrate? Do you buy yourself a present? <laughs> like, not, not really. <laughs> I'm really not giving an exciting answer. No, it's it's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting because everybody kind of wonders what you would do in that scenario. And you know, I buy myself a purse whenever I get a new job. Fair, very fair. I think I would I would go the jewelry route. I at <laughs> some point it wasn't like an immediate celebration purchase, but once I started doing some of the show, I got myself a really nice ring. So I was. That was a little, yeah, piece of yeah. little like celebratory, I guess, purchase. <laughs> I love that. So tell me a little bit about the advice you've gotten from these guys, from anyone. So whether it be Kyler or Andy or the directors, I'd love to hear a piece of advice you've gotten since you've been working on the show. And David, I'm going to go to you first. Um. Evan said to me, basically, uh, that what he liked to do as part of his process is he would imagine the character as an animal and to sort of embody the spirit or the energy of an animal. And uh, he mentioned a, um, a bird, basically. Elliot is, a, is a, a strong, caring mother bird type of sorts um, with, with the, the wisdom a bird would acquire from being so high above everyone else, I guess. Um, in his in his barn. Yeah, in his <laughs> barn, and and knowing about the the time travel and seeing a history in, unfold before him, and so I really kept that in mind as we went forward. Did you did you assign animals to Cat or Alice? Uh, did I? Yeah. Um. Can't Even if it's just did, in your head, and now we're forcing you to act yeah, out but, with but, it. Yeah, but 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 I I'm gonna <laughs> think of one right now. Um, Sadie is an armadillo. Oh. <laughs> Sadie is an armadillo. Why? Alice. Uh, um, no, Alice. Okay. Alice is an armadillo. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what Sadie is. Sadie's Sadie. Sadie. Um, <laughs> But and uh, don't ask me why Alice is an armadillo, but uh, but that just makes sense. That makes sense. Now, cat. I think cat is a cat. Original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And that so that worked for you. Were you did you agree with Evan that the I did. Well, well, a, as soon as he said it, it made sense in my head. It really okay. did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Alex, how about you? Did you get any good advice? I did, actually. I mean, I, I definitely learned so much from so many people. Um, but kind of the first thing that came to mind, and I don't know if I can say who told me this because they're not yet in the show, but <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time with them on set. And they, they pretty much told me that 
um, you can't logic your way through a character. You just have to feel it. And I feel like that's such a that's such a vague, subjective piece of advice. But for some reason, it, like again, like David, it just clicked in my head. And because I'm always, I always logic my way through everything in life. I'm a very like black and white thinker, unfortunately. Well, <laughs> that's kind of is good and bad. Um, but I, I guess with acting specifically, it was a very much kind of like shocker, eye opener to me that he's so right. I, I can't just apply logic here. Like this is a real human with real feelings and emotions and experiences. And if I can't feel it, I can't show it. So I think I, I used a lot of that wisdom, I guess, in, in preparation for some of my scenes too. And and trying to feel the scene as much as I can, not just know what it looks like or what it should look like. Okay. And Sadie, how about you? Did you get any good words of wisdom? Oh, I feel like I can't top what you said, Alex. That's such a nice <laughs> thing. And I love the like surprise. Like, who's it going to be? Um, I know. <laughs> I'll tell you. We'll have future, we're going to have future ones of these. So you're going to have to like flag it when we can talk about it. Okay, um, great. Um, I don't know. I feel like, you know, working with Andy and Kyler, who are both so experienced, um, I learned so much from both of them. But in terms of learning by example, I think that they both just demonstrated how you can be very experienced and very, very well recognized and known and celebrated and still be really, really generous with people who are really just starting out um, because they never, they never hesitated to like jump into conversations about the characters and the story and everything with, with me and with us, with all of us. Um, you know, they were, they were so generous with their energy, even though they were carrying this, this big story and this big responsibility. And so I think that like, that's something I want to take with me is how is their generosity in the process and how much I learned by just being in an environment where they are so open and excited about the project that's along cool. with all of us. Yeah. Um, so the three of you, the three characters really become thick as thieves so quickly. Was there anything you guys did off camera to kind of bond with one another? <laughs> I mean, no, oh, no, now I think it's like a good story and let's hear it. <laughs> mm. I, don't, I don't even know. It's like there wasn't even anything specific that we did necessarily, but I'll never forget the late night shoots where it's 1 a.m. and we're just so overly tired that everything is funny. And like more specifically, there was one scene that we did outside on location. And we were just sitting in our, I guess, holding tent while they were setting up the shot and, and just talking about the most stupid topics, but the most <laughs> hilarious, like, and now we just have so many inside jokes that came from it. And I think that's really what brings you together is when you're just exhausted on your last breath, like can barely keep your eyes open, talking about the craziest, weirdest things, but it's just kind of your most raw self. And, and I think that brought us pretty close. <laughs> that's great so what was the first day on set where all three of you were working together like was that something that was like, I imagine there was some build up and excitement as you worked towards that I think that was the day where we shot the scene from episode one where I, you've given me the blanket and I'm like walking up to the farm mm -hmm. and I meet yeah. Tina for the first time yeah. and, then, and then we see Colton for the first time too Mm -hmm. um I th that, am I right in saying yeah, that you're was right day? you're right that was the first day yeah I mean I I have to say to me filming that felt like what it's like to watch it it's like like I felt like my breath was taken away like it, the environment was stunning seeing everyone together finally was amazing um and I don't say anything in that scene, really. I just keep saying, I'm Alice, I'm Alice. Oh, really? <laughs> um, and so I just remember being like, really just taking the opportunity to take it in. But I don't know what that was like for you guys, um, David. Uh, I well, I, it was it was a long day. I We did a scene in the morning. We did a scene in the afternoon. And then uh, Sadie, you and I, we finished uh, at, 
in the scene that's the end of episode one mm -hmm. where you, come and you 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 tell me that future me had talked to you um so it was incredible because i had a lot of time to just wander around the the, uh, the location and take in the natural beauty of it i grew up surrounded by nature and so it was incredible to just spend lots of time there it was a great way to get out of the city um but it, it was beautiful it was great to meet all of you guys as well uh spend some time with the crew get to know everybody cool so was what was it like kind of stepping into the 90s was there anything about the 90s that you didn't know that really surprised you or I, any items that you were like what is that i i got one um i did not realize that everybody ruined the back of their their jeans when they walked because i was always walking on the the back of my pant legs and and <laughs> ruining them <laughs> And so I was very surprised. I was like, is this supposed to happen? And then everyone in the crew was like, yeah, this is just what we did. <laughs> just ruined our clothes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good random one. <laughs> yeah. um, Alex, had you heard the AOL dial-up noise before? I the fact that I, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're talking about a, a phone? Is that? The, yeah, the sound that it made when they were connecting to the internet. Oh, see, no, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, no, there was definitely a lot of, a lot of nice little shocks throughout. I mean, I, I sound like an idiot when I say this, and and I was definitely alive at a time where there weren't cell phones, but like I've just become so accustomed to always having a phone and texting my friend or <laughs> taking a selfie for example which is also kind of discussed in the show too that we you know a cat doesn't know what a selfie is and it was just so funny that the 90s didn't seem like too long ago and yet so much has changed in terms of technology and so I really had to go back to my early early roots to try to snap out of that <laughs> amen to that so for the for you two ladies, we already got David's answer to this. Like, was there anything from the fashion of the '90s? I mean, CD, you you rock the like baby doll dress with the t-shirt under it. You look so cute in it. I well, thank you. Um, we we share a lot of clothes in the '90s because Alice is always showing up soaking wet, as <laughs> you might imagine. <laughs> um, so that's a really fun part of the show that like. In the present day, Alice is pretty, like, she tries to fly under the radar. She doesn't really want to attract too much attention. Um, but then, you know, that's kind of the opposite with the way that Teen Cat dresses. She's, like, all about, you know, expressing mm -hmm. herself with her clothes. And so it's pretty cute when Alice goes back and, and she gets to share that, the love of, like, fashion and clothes. Um, Al Alice always keeps her docs and her Doc Martens from the present <laughs> in the past. And um, she's a girl after my own heart. I love my docs. So <laughs> that's a fun, a fun part of the clothes that I, is from the 90s. And I, I also would wear that now. Very cool. Is there any of the outfits that you really liked, Alex? Um, I, to be honest, I was really shocked at the amount of jewelry that was worn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a big jewelry person, even today. Like I had, I'm covered in earrings and necklaces and bracelets and I love it. Um, but it's all silver. So Cat is very, like Sadie said, bright, bright colors, lots of different um, bedazzled jewels and shirts and <laughs> outfits and hair ties and different colors and pastels and neon. And, and so she's very expressive in terms of what she wears. And I think that was a big thing in the 90s is your personality shining through in a lot of your accessories. And Cat was definitely a, a good example of that. <laughs> Um, well, let's, I want to go back to talking about how wet Sadie is all the time because Alice is always, uh, in the pond. Um, Sadie, you posted this really cool behind the scenes photo on Instagram a few days ago. And I want to ask what is happening in this picture? <laughs> yeah. So we, um, because there's the underwater sequence in episode one, we had, uh, a day where we filmed underwater at our DP's pool. Um, so shout out to Tom Bess for having us at his pool. We kept calling it our pool party, but it was, <laughs> it, you know, it, it didn't really feel like a party because it was pretty hard work. Um, we had two scuba divers 
who were underwater with me operating the camera and helping with keeping me in place so that I was in the frame. And then that picture is me sitting on the side of Tom's pool. And then our director, Grant Harvey, giving, I imagine, some sort of notes um, about what, what's to come. I'm clearly, I've clearly, are, clearly already been in the water. Yes. <laughs> wet and fully in my clothes. This is, I think, also in like October or something. And then... Are you getting uh, makeup touch-ups too? And that's Patrice Boudreaux. He was, uh, he was doing makeup finals on me on the side of the pool. I mean, who's to say if that, you know, works when you're fully submerged in water for <laughs> hours, but his attention to detail is, you know, like nothing I've ever seen before. And his work is amazing. So that just goes to show you what working with Patrice is like. Um, so it was, but that was pretty fun, the underwater part. How are those Doc Martens when they're wet? I thought I would be sinking straight to the bottom. With <laughs> I actually said like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, I'm a, I, I can swim, but like, I'm a little worried I'm gonna, you know, find myself at the bottom of the pool with these on. But they actually weren't so bad. They're kind of like wetsuit boots. Like they would fill with water and then... Yeah, but but I, they were always soaking wet. <laughs> but I, I think I had like I think I had six or seven or maybe more pairs like in rotation so that they could keep up with how often we were going in and out of the water. <laughs> oh, that's good, and so that when you were be walking in them, I hope they weren't like squishing. I'm just <laughs> yeah, only if I had really to be, fun for the sound. Yeah, only if I had to be drenched, and then we would switch them out to dry ones. Awesome. Well, speaking of helping you with pond life. <laughs> Uh, David, what was it like being the one that Alice confides in? Um, it was quite a position of power with a little bit of, uh, <laughs> I could, I could, I could cr destroy the whole space time continuum by, by telling, uh, telling everybody. Um, <laughs> I decided against that, but, um, basically, uh, I felt, um, there was a little bit of a, a moral dilemma in it because obviously... Kat's one of my best friends in the whole world. She's my best friend in the whole world. And I'm kind of lying to her. That's not telling her. So obviously, speaking of the space-time continuum, mm -hmm. for each of you, I'm sure you've watched many a thing with time travel, <laughs> whether it be a movie or a TV show. What is one of your favorite time travel pieces of entertainment? David, you go first, because I feel okay. like you've thought about this a lot. Yeah. Uh, my, my favorite piece of uh, time travel media is a show called Steins Gate. Incredible. Incredible show. If you haven't watched Steins Gate, you should watch it. It's an anime. So if, if, if you're into that sort of thing, it's incredible. All right. Yeah. And how about you, Alex? I, like, I haven't really watched a lot of time travel. I, I don't know if that's weird, but I, I would have to say, like, Back to the Future, I think would be kind of the... I think that's really the first film that's ever really gone deep into the whole time travel space and, and really gone into that conversation a bit. So I'd say that that was a pretty cool one. But otherwise, I don't know. I, I think this is really the closest I've gone to time travel since. <laughs> and how about you, Sadie? I was going to say the same thing. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I, I normally actually stay away from, like, magical sci-fi type stuff like it's just not really what i gravitate towards to watch as an audience member but what i'm finding from this show is how it's like it's almost like the two things are existing at once and it doesn't feel like one of them is like a mirage and then one of them is real life it's like they're both real life and they're both happening and you have agency in both timelines and so i think that's what's different for me when you said time travel i thought 17 again but that's not time travel it's like swapping body <laughs> it's a body swap yeah but, but i but <laughs> thought it was because it has zach efron and i love him so. but you know alex and kyler could do a remake of that you know with female i age. think they should yep. i think you could <laughs> 15 again <laughs> anyway so i don't have a really good answer but no it's a good answer and back to the future is wonderful <laughs> um, I am very curious, and maybe it's more of a question for Andy and Kyler, if there will be like 
little Easter eggs to think like it would be amazing if someone just said where we're going there are, we don't need roads <laughs> yeah true that would be interesting i don't know like just you know throw i love an easter egg what can i say <laughs> kyler kyler has some easter eggs of other 90s like iconic moments in the season but they're not necessarily from like her own work they're like of like iconic 90s things very cool um so what does it mean to you guys to be part of the Hallmark family? I mean, this is a, a network with really quite an amazing legacy. And, you know, are you having moments where you're like, Hallmark is more than Christmas. You've got to watch my show. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, for sure. I think Hallmark has always, yes, it, it does a lot of Christmas and everything. But I think something in a lot of its shows and movies is just that whole family piece and importance of like family love friendships relationships uh discovery mystery i think it encompasses all of that and this show is really it does that as well and then quite beautifully um so i think it's very nice that hallmark is also really stepping into more of like a sensitive space as well with some of the topics we cover and and some of the scenes that are up and coming um so it'll be interesting to see how fans are able to almost resonate with some of these characters and moments. Um, and if not, maybe just sympathize. So it's, it's nice to be able to, to kind of be part of something that's um, really showing people some of the, the good and the bad of life from a, a family lens, I guess. Yeah, love that. Mm -hmm. Love that. So before we wrap up, I mean, I don't want you to give away too much, but I would love to hear from each of you. Maybe it's maybe it's a five word challenge or something. Describe what people can look forward to in the next episode or two. This David, you go first. I feel like you, you quick on these things. Um, well, th this is this is the one I'm not quick on. Uh, <laughs> um, I think uh, what we're going to see is is um, what I'm really excited for people to see is how Sadie is going to. Uh, communicate with with Elliot in both the past and the present Ooh. yeah Ooh, I like that all right Sadie you're up okay um the next couple of episodes I feel like we really go full on 90s nostalgia so I think there's something really exciting about that and then I think also everyone's dying to understand well, you can time travel, so now what are you going to do about your family? And I think that that's a really pressing question for our viewers so far. So, All right, Alex, they, they've set the bar high. Let's hear, let's hear your tease. Um, I think it's more, I guess, more questions to be asked, but also more answers. So I think for every answer you get, you have three more questions, <laughs> which always kind of keeps you coming back for more. But I think there's going to be a lot more, um, a lot more things opening up about Jacob, for example, and kind of some of the other things that are up in the air right now that you, you're hoping to learn more about. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for joining <laughs> us. And thank you everyone watching for joining us. Tune in for new episodes of The Way Home on the Hallmark Channel, Sundays at 9, 8 central. And of course, feel free to tweet along with the hashtag The Way Home. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>